Well, it's always a great relief to me when I see John and Rob rock, rocking their heads along in the uh, booth here because <laughs> it means I nailed the audio cue and we're actually here on time, seeming like a bunch of professionals here for the Rec Poker Podcast. So thank you all for joining us here live on YouTube at 730 Eastern on Monday night, just like we do every week. And thank you to the Running Aces Hotel, Racetrack and Casino, our fantastic sponsor. And we're coming home, baby we got a rec poker road trip planned for August 4th and 5th uh, at the one and only Running Aces Hotel, Racetrack, and Casino. So more details about that later on in the show. Um, but I have to thank our sponsors. I have to introduce myself. I guess my name is Jim Reed. I'm Bluffsterini in the home game at Rec Poker Jim on Twitter. And I've got the best freaking job in the world because every Monday night they hand me the mic and I get to host the Rec Poker podcast and talk about poker with all my amazing friends on the Wrecking Crew. That's right. There's a crew that makes the magic happen here at Rec Poker. And uh, if you want to find out more about all the fantastic folks that get involved to make your Rec Poker experience as great as it can be, you can go to rec.poker slash crew. But just listen up because you're going to meet a few of them right here tonight as well. I'm John Somsky, also known as Poker Geek MN everywhere. And I'm Rob Washam, and I'm Rabman50, just about everywhere. Right. And uh, like I say, it takes a village to make the magic happen over here. I'm so pleased to be joined by a different uh, rotation of Wrecking Crew members every night here in the every week in the chats edition of the podcast. We also have a forums edition of the podcast. And if folks enjoy the strategy side of poker, they might enjoy those forums editions of the podcast as well. Please subscribe and let us know that uh, you enjoy the show. Tonight, we are going to be talking to the, 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 the grandparents, the parents of the Poker Oasis, the, the, the people that made the Poker Oasis a thing. So when I, I've, uh, you, if you're on Twitter, um, you might be familiar with the Poker Oasis. Um, Joseph and Tony have been uh, running this uh, awesome, fun home game down in Las Vegas for a while. And I got uh, a pleasure to meet up with them myself when I was down there. And so we're going to talk to them. And why don't we just start with that? So, uh, Tony and Joseph, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, I want to know, I want to know more about this story that we sort of started talking about when I was down there in person. You guys took the leap. You moved to Las Vegas. You started this poker club. So let's let's start a little further back from that, and uh, you guys can figure out who's going to go first. But <laughs> tell me a little bit about um, what caused poker to kind of have this um, role of primacy in your life that, that made it something that you could really go in and take a leap like this with. I'll let him take that first, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, thanks for having us. I mean, we're both pleased to be here and it's definitely exciting. Um, I mean, stop me if you've heard this, this story before, but it was kind of four simple steps, rounders, moneymaker, home games, Vegas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. So yeah, we we all know that that lineage, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's, so, it's a it's a path well tread. Let me say that it's uh, you're an ex <laughs> you're an excellent company there, Joseph. Right. Right. Uh, thank you. Uh, so <laughs> well, when we lived in Virginia, uh, we kind of hosted some some home games. Um, it was basically a unwind on a Friday night. You know, twenty bucks, low stakes, just for fun. Uh, moved to Charlotte and kind of did the same thing. And we found a lot of, of good friends along the way doing that. Uh, quick aside, we were actually looking at the Denver area, you know, go Avalanche, go Broncos. Um, and the market was just stupid. So we mm -hmm. took a step back and said, well, why not Vegas? And it's just enough crazy for the two of us. And it was absolutely the, the right decision. And we hadn't actually stepped foot in Vegas until we were under contract for our house. <laughs> so it was the ultimate leap of faith and it just works. Yeah. Tony, what about, what about your, uh, your side of that? What's, what's your take um, on that the story? My side of that is that I met him. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I remember being taught, uh, like five card draw, I guess, 
I mean, back when I was little, my cousin showed me and that was all besides solitaire that I really knew about cards um, until, you know, we, we were together for a while and he said, yeah, do you want to learn? Or maybe more like, why don't you learn? So I said, okay, sure. I like a challenge. <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, since then, and, and especially moving here to Vegas, we've had the privilege of meeting a lot of different and interesting people from very recreational players all the way to bracelet winners and, you know, getting to know them, have conversations, see sort of all sides of, of the game and the community. And it's been, it's been really interesting. Yeah. It's one of the things I noticed, uh, the more involved I've gotten in the poker world is just how open and small the poker world is and how full of people that want to help you know, generous, kind people that want to make uh, want to make other poker players' worlds better. Um, I wouldn't necessarily have credited the poker community with being that sweet, <laughs> and, you know, because you just, you know, we've talked about on the show before. Sometimes you just hear about some of the bad apples, and I think poker and gambling get kind of a uh, a bad rep when it comes to that sort of thing in the mainstream. But it couldn't be farther from the truth. Um, so, so. You both love poker, obviously. Uh, you're living in Virginia. You're enjoying home games there. What makes you decide, without ever having set foot in Las Vegas, like, that's it. We're going. We're making it happen. I mean, that really, uh, it's not hyperbole to say, like, that's a real leap of faith. Yeah, it, it was just one of those, we were living in Charlotte and said, well, there's just nothing here for us. We were both working from home at the time. And... Mm. Yeah, it was just, I, I can't even really explain it other than we we saved about 90000 buying a house here than Denver. So there, there's your answer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, and I think we were tired of, of the East Coast, you know, the, the icy winters, the humidity. Uh, you know, I, I've had family in the Southwest and we visited a bit and like, well, it's it's a nice area. We kind of played around with Arizona a little bit and then, you know, just kind of talking it through saying, well, if you want to get more serious about, you know, poker, this might be a good place to do it. <laughs> yeah. And, and tired of driving three and a half hours to Cherokee from, from Charlotte. So <laughs> that, that was a good driver as well. No pun intended. Yeah, I believe it. Um, we're just getting, we're joined here by Kim Kilroy, who just missed the sound off earlier, but uh, Kim, the pet vet Kilroy is here. Hello, Kim. Feel free to jump in if you have any questions or comments for our group. Um, so, and then what, so tell me, tell me a little bit about the Poker Oasis, how it started. Um, you guys have a really sweet setup there. The magnetized chips. I can't, I can't quite express how great I think those are when it comes to like clumsy online players like me coming in and knocking stuff all over the place, being able to just stack them up so pretty like that. Uh, my, my hat's off to you um how, how how did that get started in earnest there i know you played home games before but uh it was this where that kind of made, found its own way yeah and it was fortunate you know when we were looking at at houses online when we were still in, in charlotte one of the prerequisites was yeah we need space to play poker uh because you know, we had this little four foot wide poker table that was supposed to fit eight people, you know, in really tight quarters. But no, we're, we're going to make it comfortable. We're going to have a good room for it. And it's just kind of happens in organically, for a lack of a better word right now. Uh, just we went to the first thing that anyone does when they move to Vegas is go to Spinetti's and look at all the gaming supplies and all the toys and everything. So I said, yeah, we need a table. So we got the table and the chairs and then it was, well, we have space for two tables, so let's do that. So now we have a duplicate setup of, of everything. And, you know, it's just it's kind of my my passion project. And obviously for, for Tony as well, because um, she won't admit it, but I'm the second best poker player in the house. <laughs> it's live. It can't be refuted. It's That's right. It can't be unsaid. Um, and, and so... Well. <laughs> <laughs> and and now you've gone, you know, now it's it's expand every time I turn around, we're we're expanding things. So now we have 
I think enough cards for both tables for, I think he said 21 mixed games. Mm. So it's like, okay, so we're really just throwing it all out there and, and uh, <laughs> something for everybody for sure. Yeah. Well, and that's something for everybody. I think there's kind of, that's a great way to be thinking about poker and, uh, and how we want to make room for new players at the table. And I know, you know, you guys have talked as well about, um, helping new players learn the game and get more comfortable in in a in a playing environment and that kind of thing. Um, I guess tell me a little bit about sort of why you think that's important and ways that that some places are are, are better or worse at other places than making new players feel welcome. Yeah, you know what? I'll I'll let Tony take that one first. I I mean. So, and, and I speak from sort of a woman's point of view and, and there are some very, very talented women players out there. And there are groups specifically tailored just for women's communities. And I think that's great, but, you know, I want to walk into a place and not feel like I'm out of place. I, it, there, it's so much fun to be had. It's, there are so many dynamic games and I don't want to walk in, have everybody at the table kind of go, mm, and and just feel like this big. <laughs> so, you know, to have kind of a welcoming environment where you can goof off a bit, you can make mistakes, we can talk through them. We can say, why are you folding big blind if nobody raised? I mean, <laughs> I've had to try people for that. Like, no, 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 just keep them in. It's a free, free flop. Like, <laughs> But the the room to have those moments and and learn from them before going into a place where, you know, you have a table full of nothing but OMCs, you know, it, staring at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rob. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, it's true. I mean, when we had our uh, we had our rec poker meetup game at uh, MGM Grand a few weeks ago. And I mean, that was that was spectacular. I, but I think one of the things that was fun about it, uh, several members who are not traditionally cash players, they're tournament players or they're online players, came and gave it a try because they knew it was a comforting group. It was a welcoming group. No one was going to be berating them for making mistakes. And, you know, everyone was going to have a good time and try their best and uh, learn together. And I think that that is not always the the dynamic at the poker table, as you point out there, Tony. Um so I, it's, I mean, kudos to you guys for cultivating that kind of space. Um, Joseph, has that been something that's been uh, like a part of the mandate since the beginning for you? Yeah, no, absolutely. And there's some people that have come in who have tried to take it a little bit too seriously. And, you know, you're going to get some of that. Um, you know, but our, our mentality is if you want the stress and you want the ego, go play at a casino. Yeah, you know, made a rhyme and didn't even mean to, you know, not, you know, and I'm not saying that, you know, casinos are bad. Obviously, if you want to, you know, better your game, get more advanced then yeah, you go play. But to learn, don't pay the house to learn how to mm -hmm. play poker because that's just a losing proposition. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we try to make it inviting and friendly and we've met some really good friends doing that and some some really good people and, and made you know, great friendships. So yeah, it, it's been all around a, a positive experience. I really like that line. Uh, don't pay the house to learn. Um, you know, I think I told you guys, we do our play money home games here. John Somsky runs our club uh, where we, we run 10 of these uh, play, play tournaments, play chip tournaments a week. And um, it's exactly, it's like a place to come practice, find out what the mistakes are. You know, I think, I think uh, in live games in particular, Things like learning that you can't just raise by putting one chip in that's bigger than the raise amount, or like learning what a learning what a uh, a string bet is. On the show last week, we were talking about some of sort of like the chip mechanics that people give themselves away with when they're not used to playing live, and how it can be embarrassing to do that in you know in a tournament situation or something, or with a bunch of people that are you know not going to give you the uh, the grace of of someone who's learning. So. Um, I think that's I think that's a fantastic way to approach the game. 
Um, Joseph, you and Tony have both mentioned sort of all the people that you've met, the friends you've made in the poker world. Um, I was like, how long have you been in Las Vegas now since you moved there? Uh, just under 18 months. So you know, a year yeah. and a half. A year and a half. And you really flourished in that time. Um, I was really pleased uh, when we were talking um, sort of about some of the friends that we had in common from the poker world and um, the way that you'd affiliated yourselves, like with the charity series of poker, for instance. Um, so you guys move fast. That That's fantastic. T tell me a little bit about sort of what that experience was like um, being a new person or a new couple in Vegas and in, in the poker scene down there and sort of meeting people and getting brought into the community. Talk talk a little about that experience. Yeah, sure. And yeah, we definitely didn't waste any time. And we, we were here the third week of January and yeah, we were both working that week and I saw the Pro Bowl was here. So I said, hey, honey, you want to go to the Pro Bowl? And that was literally two weeks from when we moved here. So we went to the Pro Bowl. And again, we just kind of dove in, you know, feet first, head first, whichever, into all of the stuff that Vegas has. And I have to credit Tony for finding the CSOP event and saying, hey, why don't you, you know, go do that? And just from what I know now versus back then, it's just night and day. I was nervous. You know, I wasn't talking to anybody. I knitted my way to a second place finish. Nice. And I said, oh, this was kind of fun, right? Right. <laughs> and uh, you know, so we said, yeah, this this is a lot of fun. This is definitely on brand for us. And we started volunteering. Uh, and we started May of last year. We ended up on the St. Jude fundraising committee. And we helped out for, for about a year or so. We've kind of backed off with other things going on, but we're definitely still a, a part of, of helping them out with that. And yeah, we've met a lot, a lot of people. That's amazing. It, no, don't don't give yourself any grief for knitting your way to uh, second place. There's no photos <laughs> on the scorecard, man. You get to that second place finish, however, uh, however you need to. That's no, that's not easy to do. <laughs> right. Uh, this is this is very true. And and yeah, Matt, yeah, Matt Stout, who runs Charity Series of Poker, uh, yeah, well known, uh, especially on the WPT side of things as well um definitely does some some great things and we've been happy to help and you know we've had some of the poker news guys at the home game for for some of the mixed games and stuff uh we've met you know draft kings executives lincoln kennedy from uh you know from the raiders uh, just a, a lot of people um who come out to be the celebrity bounties and stuff and still kind of talk to from from time to time um just real quick and then I'll let Tony take it, but when we went to uh, the Golden Knights Edmonton round two, game one, uh, Wa, Colasar, and Carrier started, and we've known and met all three of them, you know, from CSOP. So it was kind of nice to, hey, we know those guys, and they're starting game, you know, game one of round two in the playoffs. <laughs> so it, yeah. Anyway, it's Vegas. It's exciting. Uh, it's as fun or as boring as you want it to be. <laughs> yeah. Tony, well, do you have something? It, a lot, it makes it a lot easier for me when he's a social butterfly. So I pretty much just kind of follow along with, you know, oh, let's go to, okay, let's go do this. I, <laughs> let's go try this out. Sure. Let's go meet these people. Absolutely. I. <laughs> it's It's definitely been... Uh, a whirlwind but a really good one um mm. we have been afforded a lot of opportunities in meeting some people that you know you've read books about and and it's really really interesting and, and very eye-opening um getting to know people that you see on on poker go or something and you think that's unattainable you mm -hmm. know they this is so much larger than life and then you know you end up sitting at a table with him and you go, oh, well, they're fine. <laughs> Whatever, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 truly, yeah, truly. Say, uh, right, and, and one of which we've made friends with is a friend of the rec poker, Chris Wallace. Oh, um, yeah, Chris Fox so, Wallace, yeah, long-time so, friend, long-time friend of the show. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah no, so, so rock, Tony rock has, has gone rock hunting. <laughs> oh. There, there you go. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. I, and I, you know, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but I really am just blown away at how approachable these people are in the poker world. Like, um, I, you know, I don't want to give away any secrets, but a lot of the big guests we've had on the show, I've just DM'd them on Twitter and said like, hey, will you come on our podcast? <laughs> and, you know, sometimes people are surprisingly obliging. And I think, um, you know, you kind of point out meeting some celebrity bounties and uh, people that are, are, are you know, celebrities either in the world of poker or, or in another part of the world. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're listening to this show, go ask someone to do something like if ask make the ask you never know what they're going to say and you'd be surprised how generous some people might be with their time or their reputation or you know um <laughs> maybe they'll come on your podcast or <laughs> you know maybe they'll put up a prize to your tournament or something like that you really never know but a lot of these people want to help so um here rob did you have something there well i'm just curious about your home games i'm surprised if you only have two tables how do you keep it constricted to like 18 people because i would think that your home games would be very very popular in that area right yeah so now very very good question and actually ironically we only end up using one of the tables for for whatever reason i don't know if people are just reticent to to go to someone's house to to play poker you know especially with all the the horror stories that you hear now of you know just things happening in the world but, I mean, we've uh, we had the have, second one out a couple times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we've had, and mainly for tournaments. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've definitely, you know, had, had the second one out a, a couple of times, two or three times, I think. I think we've held, what, 12 or 13 different events over the, you know, the, say the last 15 or 14, 15 months. So, um, but I think with with keeping the numbers lower, or at least with two tables, we do have a, a meetup group and that's where you can RSVP for, for the events and stuff. So I'll put the limit on there. Um, and, you know, we've got some, some other friends that are saying on Twitter or whatever that I'll kind of invite on the side. So it's just, it, it is kind of a dance to keep it, you know, keep the numbers you know, manageable, you know, especially we're in a residence. So there's parking and stuff like that. So there's definitely a lot of moving parts there. So I take it you're in South Vegas because you said it's the best poker room south of South Point. <laughs> and I've, I've been Absolutely. to South Point a few times, so I know exactly where that is. Um, another curious thing, do you have dealer a dealer then for that table that's not a player or are the players dealing themselves? Well, we started with, with them dealing and it was just slowing up the game too much, I'm sure, as, as you know. Uh, so when we do hold them, um, um, usually, you know, either I'll deal or Tony will deal. If we do mix games, uh, I'll bring in a dealer for that. And we've met some some good ones from from CSOP. Um, you know, so I'll shoot them however much for them to to come out because you know obviously they're they're spending their time here as well. Um, so yeah, definitely for the mixed games, we'll, you know, we'll have the, the dedicated dealer, the out, outsource dealer. Yeah, I play in a home game here where I live, and uh, we usually have two or three tables, and they have s specific dealers for each of the tables, but the dealers also play. Mm -hmm. So they do end up dealing for every hand, because like you say, a lot of people are not comfortable dealing. A lot of um, recreational players, especially are not comfortable dealing, don't know how to shuffle, don't know how to keep the cards, you know, uh, you know, so that people can't see them, that sort of thing. So yeah, I, I like the idea of having a specific dealer. So I was wondering if on your regular games, does your dealer actually get to play or is that dealer specifically just dealing? Yeah, I guess it kind of depends on what they're they're comfortable with. I tried dealing and playing a couple of events ago, and that didn't go well. Um, <laughs> you know, it was it was until I let one of my friends deal that I actually started playing well. Um, <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, so yeah, they can absolutely play. It depends again what they're comfortable with. Uh, John Somsky, you unmuted there. Yeah, I was uh, wondering what type of mixed games do you play? I'm a fan of mixed games i'd like to promote them as much as possible so what all do you play 
Well, we have uh, you know, obviously we, we stick with with the horse games. So you know, Hold'em, Omaha Raz. Uh, we have Crazy Pineapple. That one's you know, of course, fine. Um, Badoogie's fine. Yeah. So we have you know, I think Big O is one of the cards that that we have. You know, two to seven triple draw or single draw. Uh, Badoosie, Badasi. Yeah, so, so nothing too out of the ordinary, you know, if we're not doing the Resorts World Carnival games or anything like that, but it, it's definitely <laughs> some of the variations of the, you know, of the the stud or the, um, you know, the, the community or the, the draw games. Well, and the mixed games. Um, so the, the name of it the, on the meetup is, you know, the home games and study group. And one person coming to one of the home games made a good point. Like, so is the study group part actually a thing? <laughs> is it, yeah, it, it is. And, and we'll get there. So um, we have, especially with the mixed games, you know, people coming here have at least a basic understanding of hold them. Um, but we have started the study group portion of the mixed games. And I even want to do some hold'em study you know i want to talk more like game theory and and that kind of thing so yeah it, we're very lucky to um have a couple of friends that are very proficient in mixed games willing to come over and kind of walk us as a group through some of these things like i'm still reticent about omaha so <laughs> Yeah. yeah, there's too many cards. I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, but... the mixed game, it's it's a it's a different experience. It is. I think a lot mm -hmm. of a lot of players are very familiar with No Limit Hold'em now. Um, and some of those other games can feel like quite a departure. You know, John uh, is being modest, but he actually he's been a, a proponent for expanding the mixed game pool for a long time now. We actually run a different mixed game series every month here in our home game club. And for the entire previous month, there's a practice game on Saturday nights in that variant nice. so that when people get to the real player of the year points race um, when it's mixed game month, they're not dipping a toe in for the first time. And we I feel that I feel that uh, pain. I, I, I struggle with a lot of mixed games because it's just not what my training's been in. But I see that it's so much fun. Like if you walk into a casino, the tables that are laughing, those folks are playing mixed games. It's not all just like hoodies and earbuds. Um, those players are there to have a good time. And I do feel like it's going to be harder to solve those games than it will be to sort of practically uh, solve No Limit Hold'em. So I do think that mixed games are kind of the future. And um, their complexity is one of the reasons why that is the case. So um, I think we could all use a little help. <laughs> we could all use a little help uh, getting into those mixed games. Um, but I was curious about that. I'm glad you brought that up. So yeah, Joseph... Um, Talk talk a little bit about sort of like the the learning side of it or the teaching side of it or what does that is it like um, people just come in and there's questions and answers or uh, you turn the cards over after the hand and kind of talk about why people did what they did talk a little bit about that yeah sure um, yeah no you, you said exactly people come in we'll do kind of a Q and A you know even you know in in the beginning when we were doing the mixed games. No, we would actually deal the hands face up. That way right. everybody could see, like if we're doing Omaha, you know, that way you just go position by position and say, well, do you think this is good or bad? And, you know, let them think about it a little bit as well to get them in, engaged in, in, you know, the process, um, you know, let them kind of figure things out as, as they're going along as we're, as we're teaching them. And yeah, that was definitely... I, I think a good experience for people and we kind of started the mixed games uh we were at a csop event and i know uh chad and jesse from poker mm. News wanted to start doing some mixed games and you know even kind of said why are we going to play for eight mixed games and pay the house to learn so i said well fine we'll do two four here at the oasis and there's no rake and we can play until, you know, whatever. So yeah, we, we've kind of been, again, it's more of, you know, an inexpensive fun way to learn, you know, mm -hmm. hold them, mix games, whatever the case. And, you know, the number one rule that I have on the thing is have fun. 
you know, that's, yeah, that, that's kind of where it starts. Nice. Tony, do you have something you wanted to add there? Um, and not just, uh, I mean, in terms of the learning aspect, that's something we even just between the two of us do on a fairly regular basis is, you know, one of us goes and plays, we have a debrief afterwards. We talk mm -hmm. about hands. We talk about, you know, how did you fe feel? What do you think you did right? What do you think you did wrong? You know, we'll sit there and watch, you know, we've been watching like the main event and kind of looking at, well, why are they doing X, Y, and Z? This doesn't make much sense. And, and trying to kind of break it down that way too. So, you know, that's, that's kind of what I want, you know, to see the learning portion turn into is, you know, we, even the other day, you know, sitting there just having a relaxing uh, evening and my whole thing is, okay, before solvers and everything else, you had these players, I'm reading uh, Amarillo Slim's biography right now, his pseudo autobiography, and it gets you starting to think about like, guys like that, guys like Doyle, guys like Stu Unger, you know, what did they have? What did they bring to the game? Because it wasn't the solvers and it wasn't mm. the apps and all this stuff. So, you know, that's my impetus right now is kind of digging into that and just the psychology of it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to us having more of those, you know, discussion sessions well that's something I, I want to take off that a little bit because you know you guys are really blessed to have someone in your life that loves you that will talk about poker with you <laughs> because you know a lot of other people i hear this all the time when people join rec poker they say listen i've got great friends and i love poker but my friends don't love poker and so i don't have someone to like talk to poker about so so whether it's our discord or our forums or joining the strategy conversations that we have here for our premium members um it's uh it's it's kind of hard to find that that person or that group of people that study group you know uh of peers where you can really talk poker with and read all the books you want listen to all the podcasts watch all the videos if you're not talking about poker with somebody else you you're really putting a ceiling on how far you can progress as a player so um it's a really underrated aspect of the game and how we should be helping people get along it's just having these conversations creating these spaces where people can come in and talk about poker um joseph you said i i'm sure i misheard you earlier you said no rake or rake free or something i mu there must have been some sort of miscommunication in the technology here um talk a little bit about what i'm sure i misheard right now we don't charge any fees or, or rake it's just people come play poker and have fun and that's what we do uh you know we're, we're in you know in a fortunate position you know that and again it's not you know it takes seven eight hours out of our sunday and we're also playing so we're getting something out of it as well uh but yeah no we don't charge any fees or, or rate for the cash games or tournaments or, or whatever um and actually, to further that, uh, we're doing an event on August 20th. We're just having a $20 tournament. And the winner, uh, aside from their winnings, gets a seat to the CSOP on the 26th. Wow. So it's That's just, amazing. you know, so to kind of encourage more people to come out and then whatnot. Um, so it, it's just, again, we've been kind of fortunate and we're, I don't know paying it forward, paying back the community. I don't know, however you want to look at it. <laughs> I love that. I mean, Kim did... when you... they bring chips and cookies, it's great. <laughs> yeah, yes, right. yes. We, we have one guy. At least every... Yes. <laughs> when there's one player in particular, every game uh, will bring Pringles of various flavors. And if he's not going to make the next one, he brings them extra for the <laughs> next time so that we have them. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, having good people in the group, that is the key. That's definitely the key. Um, speaking of which, Kim, I saw you on mute there. Did you have something? I did. First of all, I would always bring chips or cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and, she and would, it's true. Yeah, it's for 100%. I used to run a home game as well. Um, but also, 
I'm just wondering how many of your players that come on a regular basis are women? Actually, quite a few. And I'm really, uh, I was kind of pleasantly surprised by that. I think starting out, there may have been one, but I'm trying to think the last that would have one. That would have been me, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I think we had uh, three or four, maybe three at the last one. And it seems like that's starting to kind of spread a little more. Um, and I, I'm hoping that's because maybe word gets around or, or whatever, but that it is welcoming. It is friendly. Um, you know, even if I'm not playing that day, because for whatever reason, or if we have a full table, I like to sit and, and just kind of be a part of all of it. And yeah, I, well, one lady even brought her um, emotional support dog. I mm. guess, I guess she goes and takes it to, you know, the, the casinos and this dog has become well known. And it's like, all right, well, as long as he doesn't mind, you know, the smell of cats, I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. but yeah it we have seen more women players coming out which is really exciting that's great it sounds like such a friendly environment and i'm sure you'll get more i hope so yeah. hopefully if a few people listening and live in uh south las vegas and feel like they'd like to get involved um so i'm gonna put the links in the show notes um tony you're on Instagram and threads right now. Do you want to give a shout out for your handle there in case people want to reach you out, reach out to you? Absolutely. It's, it's the fuzzy, just one word. <laughs> and, uh, Joseph, you uh, have remained on the hellscape that is Twitter like me. Um, yes. It's mm -hmm. uh, what is your Twitter handle again? Yeah, it's just hockey underscore poker. And as you can see over Tony's right shoulder, there's the hockey aspect and yeah. why we looked at moving to Denver. Um, <laughs> I, a, a man after my own heart, before I got really involved with rec poker, my Twitter handle was Hold'em underscore Steelers. So you like a sport <laughs> poker. That's that's like, you know, you had to get how to get the most out of that. And uh, the Poker Oasis has its own uh, Twitter handle, I think. Is it just at the Poker Oasis? Correct. Yep. Just at the Poker Oasis. And I just built the website in March, uh, thepokeroasis.com. And that at least has the events on there, the upcoming events. I'll get smart enough to be able to RSVP from there, but not now. Uh, not yet. Uh, we, and but we have the, here on the meetup the meet uh, group. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. And so if, if you have meetup, you can join the group there. It's LV Poker Games and Study Group. All right. So, um, and I would encourage folks to check them out. I know uh, Meetup is becoming a very popular app, or at least, you know, maybe it was five years ago and I'm just catching on now um, for, for finding games in your area. So that's pretty cool. Um, and again, I'll, I'll put that show, I'll put that link in the show note as well. And uh, Joseph, can you just show everyone the fancy duds that you've got on in honor of the, yeah, look at that. Blue no, Jays look, <laughs> bonus points, bonus points if you can guess what player, but I'll give you a hint. There's Ooh. the, you know, there, there's the, the 92 match. World Series. Let's mm -hmm. see. I mean, there's a few. I uh, could be John Olerud. It was. There it is. Yes. Number <laughs> what? nine. Really? Nice. Oh! Number nine. <laughs> wow. Right off the okay. bat. Okay. I don't know. Literally. Hey, dink. There we go. That's, right, I don't know. Something right. was, I mean, something I, was know. speaking to me. Something was speaking to me. <laughs> John Olerud. All right. A little blast from the past right. for, for me. Teenage Jim is uh, very excited at the prospect. Um, that's awesome. Well, thank you, Joseph. Uh, thank you, Tony. Is there anything else that we should let uh, our audience know about the group or yourselves before we uh, roll on out of here? Um, I just, just one thing, well, I guess a couple of things, a definitely see if you can get Matt Stout on the podcast. Yes. We're, you know, we're getting the, him on the CSOP. No, excellent. You, you, you did a great job of introducing us. Um, I pulled him aside on break, and uh, we like spent every second of that available break time talking about how we're going to do some cool stuff in the future. So um, he's going to be a fun guest, and I think that Rec Poker and the uh, charity series of poker will be able to to have some fun together in the future. So uh, my hats off to you for that one. Thanks, Joseph. No problem. And the colors already match, so that's great because they also have the black. And I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. Uh -huh. It's just—it's a very classy organization. I've always said that. I've always said that about them. <laughs> yeah, they know what they're doing. Um, yeah, 
and yeah, definitely look at the the meetup group. Um, you know, if you're in Vegas, we would love to have you out for for a game. And again, you know, we can do the friendly stuff. I'm also looking to maybe have some more serious games, you know, for the more advanced and intermediate stuff because it doesn't have to stop at just the friendly games. It, and we'll, we're going to try to you know accommodate all levels if if we can, and definitely have the the chips to do it and stuff. So that's um, awesome. And, yeah, and hopefully we can get something done with you know with rec poker next time you're in Vegas and maybe have something here because we've got you know we've got the poker side and you already saw the Oasis side as well. So yeah, we have the, um, you know, it's yeah. it's a fantastic. We, we have it all, I, not the tutor. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna pop the cat friendly Benadryl um, before I come on over there, but nothing could nothing could keep me away i felt very well taken care of when i was over there that you guys were very kind and uh um, i think it would be a great place to do some sort of uh like educational uh, training element just like what you guys are talking about i think um i think we'll be seeing uh some sort of rec poker event at the poker oasis uh, sometime sometime coming up um joseph one more time what is the meetup they, what should they look up if they're on the meetup uh, group to find you guys? And then we'll we'll leave it with that. Is it LV? Yeah, it'll be LV Poker Games and Study Group. Okay, fantastic. Well, I hope you get a few new yep. members uh, looking you up, and um, I'll be looking forward to getting down there again sometime soon for our next uh, our next visit. It's going to be a great fit. Absolutely. All right, Joseph and Tony, thank you again for joining us and uh, for all that you're doing down there to keep poker fun in the South Las Vegas region. I can't <laughs> wait to talk to you again soon. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Bye. Have a good night. Good night. Well, while Tony and Joseph well. sign off, we'll be uh, talking about some home game results with the one and only John Somsky. And so while folks do that, um, I think we should start typing the words food bank into the YouTube chat. If you'd like to win a prize, it's free to join the show, but we do give out real prizes every week. And um, the reason we do is it's how we try and bring some awareness to the plight of food insecurity. Food insecurity exists on a spectrum. Um, there might be people in your community, your neighbors, your friends that you don't know need a little help putting food on the table or maybe putting food in the stomachs of their kids. Um, so one great way to help in your own neighborhood and your own community is just to Google food banks near me. If you go if you pull out your phone right now and Google food banks near me, you'll find an organization or two or three that would really benefit from a donation of some hours of your time, a few dollars, uh, or just some non-perishable food items. So um, I'd encourage everyone to go lend a hand to a neighbor and put some food on their table. You never know who might need the help. And if you just type the words food bank into the chat right now, you'll be eligible for a prize uh, that we will be rolling for uh, in just a few minutes. In the meantime, John Somsky, legend, man, God among men. Uh, what's new and exciting in home game land? I know you didn't win one this week because you won one last week and you're only allowed one a month is my understanding. So you must be talking about a different John Somsky. Because I am none of those things. <laughs> but we do have Keck Geek won his seventh oh daily nightly event. No surprise. And a really mad guy, mad guy, ah. got his fourth nightly victory. Congratulations. Fortune and Y got his hey. first. Oh, that was, I have this in the wrong location. This is actually the No Limit. Uh, hold them championship event that he won the and he's in event. the he's in the youtube chat right now and i don't want to dox the guy but i will say that is a previous rec poker no limit hold them champion that is uh that we're talking about there a player of the year no less who had a fantastic kick uh made in honor of that occasion if memory serves so uh fortune ny congratulations on another notch on the belt, sir, with another uh, win in the Rec Poker Home Game Series. And then we have Digging Eight Graves. Got his fifth nightly, his or her fifth nightly victory for the year. K Poker Wannabe, Ron Payton, ah, got his sixth nightly victory for the year. Hmm. D Andrus G, Daniel A. I'm assuming it's D Andrus because <laughs> Daniel A. 
<laughs> um, anyway, got his fourth nightly victory for the year. Evil Roy CA, David Westerveld, won his second daily mixed event mm. for the year. East Coast spitter Ben Enslow got Ben's his fourth back. international victory for the year. He loves Stewie 13, Stuart Carriage got his oh. second night international victory for the year. Also in the and, YouTube chat. Yep. Oh, yes. Yeah. And then uh, CKP Ham, Carol Hammock, got her first LPP event victory. Oh. So she can contact info at rec.poker for a free month at Learn Pro Poker. That's right. I think uh, we've heard Carolyn's name mentioned a few times over the last few weeks in the winner's circle here. So congratulations to her. I think this is the first Sunday win, as you pointed out, John. So please do send that email, info at rec.poker, and uh, you will you have won already a whole free month at Learn Pro Poker, which you will love. They have a, a bunch of uh, fantastic prizes going on over there. Oh, yeah, so we got Ben in the in the chat as well ben type type food bank for god's sake i'm I'm gonna roll the die soon you don't want to be uh excluded um but i see we've got uh stew and uh fortune <laughs> um fortune new york is actually uh one of the players that i played two five with for the first time at uh playground casino uh car and card room up near montreal that was a really fun trip and as is typical for these things, I was somehow managed to not arrange a ride back to the train station. Um, there were some hijinks involved with that, but uh, we can get into that another time. Uh, there we go. Okay, so I think we've got Stu, Fortune, Ben. No, no Stu, Luke. Fortune, Luke, and then Ben. So we've got a four-sided die, and there are actually four names. So we're actually going to roll the four sider here in that order let's see who the winner is this month this week it's a two that goes to fortune the one and only who says yes he's seen jim flop 17 sets in like two hours yeah if you tuned in last week you know that flopping sets is basically the only way i know how to profit from the game of poker so yes i know you do luke i know thank you luke you're right I'm a terrible person, and I do need to catch up on those. You are 100% correct, sir. Um, Luke, did did the pins arrive? This is what I want to know. This was uh, probably the furthest we've ever mailed pins, and I don't know if they are if they officially have arrived yet or not. Um, so I don't know what the lag is like on this, but type in if they did. I'd love to see a photo looking sharp with your brand new um, rec poker pins, all the way from Australia. I uh, got to mail. Uh, I got to get line up at the international um, international desk at Canada Post and send those uh, send those all the way down to Australia, along with uh, one for Merv because Merv finally got his medal. How about that? Congratulations, Merv! You deserve it. Uh, all right, folks. Well, let me see. It's uh, July tenth as this is coming out. Okay, we got to talk about the Running Aces Hotel, Racetrack, and Casino. We're having our Rec Poker Weekend up there. Coming, it says, yes, they did arrive. Okay, fantastic. Excellent work. Um, so on August 4th, which is a Friday, and August 5th, which is a Saturday, we've got a bunch of tournaments scheduled at Running Aces. There's going to be some great prizes added to the prize pool, some swag, some lammers, um, some rec poker prizes, some merchandise. That's going to be great. I think we'll also get a cash table set up so that folks can, uh, um, so that people can uh, dip a toe in, as we're saying, which is going to be really fun. On the Sunday, I think maybe we'll have like a breakfast or something if people are in town for the weekend and flying out on Sunday like I am. Uh, maybe we can all get together if you stay over at the hotel Saturday night and uh, have breakfast on Sunday or something like that. Um, so it's going to be fun. Oh, yeah. Luke says um, he did get the pins. They're on his rec poker hat. Yes, the Discord pick. I saw the pick. That's right. With the red mesh back hat. I remember now. Those were looking really good. Looked like a driver photo. Um, yeah, nicely done, Luke. Awesome. Thanks, man. And thanks for posting the pick. If folks, uh, I love seeing these photos of people with the Rec Poker merch and the pins um, repping us on different continents or, or even on our own continent and different card rooms and stuff. That is super cool. Um, so I think we're, we're, we're starting a contest where if you 
post a photo of yourself wearing any rec poker related stuff with the hashtag rep rec r-e-p-r-e-c then you're going to get entered into uh, a contest and we'll start doing a drive, uh, like a raffle for those every month or something like that. I'm not sure exactly what it's going to be. But if you're listening and you own some Rec Poker merch, um, take a take that snapshot and post it somewhere with the hashtag Rep Rec. And uh, we'll take a look at them and make sure we give out some prizes coming forward. Because it just puts a big smile on everyone on the Rec and Cruise face when they see that um, when they see that getting repped is and look at Rob, Rob smiling, even just thinking about other people smiling about seeing the merch. That's just the kind of friendly group that we have around here. Uh, so yeah, running aces, that's going to be a fantastic trip when it's coming up. We're also going to be doing a bunch of other road trips uh, this fall and winter. So stay tuned to see what's coming up with that. Um, what do you think folks? Is there anything else urgently pressing that we should uh, tell our members about before we roll on out of here or just, let, let them leave in less than an hour for once on a chats podcast. Is it even possible? Looks like looks like we might do it. We might do it, folks. OK, uh, well, thank you to everyone for uh, being here in the YouTube chat. We always have so much fun. Yeah, that's it, Luke. A final table cash pick. Amen. Yeah, that's it. I love that idea. Um, so, that, yeah, thanks for Luke and Ben and uh, Fortune. And uh, I'm, already, I'm already forgetting someone. Stu. And all the fun people uh, hanging out in the YouTube chat. That was super fun. Uh, thanks to Kim and Rob and John for uh, their insights and contributions. Kim says, can you teach us in a future podcast how to flop sets? Yeah, I'm going to work on that. I'm going to work on that one. See if we can get a little manual together. <laughs> yeah, because it is very handy. It's a very helpful. It's a bankroll booster. There's no there's no doubt about it. Um, of course, I'll thank the Running Aces Hotel, Racetrack, and Casino, but mostly it's you, the listeners, that I want to thank, because we wouldn't do it without you. So thanks for your support, and we'll see you all next week, if not before. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Bye.